whatever you can do in a mountain stand is gonna be better than you. <laughs> and better than most people. Zeig mal das da. Ich weiß noch, wenn, wenn wir Skifahren waren, sind wir mal eine Buckelpiste runter oben am Schwarze. Und der erste Teil hat er mich fahren lassen und dann hat er mich einfach so unter den Arm genommen und Buckelpiste. Das Beste ist das da, oder? Ja, oh, ja. Der Simon beim Klettern, der Martin beim Laufen und ich bin da als, als dickes Baby. <lacht> Merci, gell? Ja, ja, ja. It's not a written rule, but in Zermatt you go into the mountains with a rope partner, with somebody that can belay you. And Simon, he yeah, he he saw his little brother, me, and he knew, okay, I'm gonna like form him to my belayer. He was the closest person I could go climbing with, and that that turned out naturally that he became my number one partner. We climbed a lot. And of course, the winters are long, so what's doable in winter? We had no climbing gym. Somehow we started ice climbing. The stuff that he has done in alpinism and in climbing and ice climbing and the places that he has been are just completely mind-blowing to me. Alpinism, freeriding, it's a, it's a team effort and Simon was like the leading force for alpinism. He has lived multiple careers already. Sam Ottomotten, he has quite a few first descents as well. And here he gets and into the action. Then I met Xavier, he brought me into the free riding, into the filming world. You look old. <laughs> With Marcus, I, I, he was showing me a new chapter in freestyling, how to move like playful. He would organize everything, he would be there for everything that concerns safety and planning and, you know, do all that work. And then I had uh, also Jeremy, who was like the, the leading role for me to realize big dreams also. It's dry, rocky, and it feels really steep. And stupid. First of all, that was a more kind of my film, the first La List, but um, yeah, the only person that I could team up with was Sami. Hey Sami! Okay, go! For the second movie, La List 2, that was like totally Sami's element, altitude, alpinism, walking for hours. And I think at the end, my role was always the supporting role in, in every chapter of those, of those characters. I was supporting. Sami! Ciao, Sami! I always thought about like born too late. So we do some first descents, but the main objectives, they have been done. But actually with the gear we have, it's crazy. Like I think it's not born too late. It's born on the right time here. The Obergabelon is a beautiful face. If you ask any kids 
to to draw a mountain, it's gonna be uh, the portrait of the Obo Gabalon. Triangle, white, super beautiful. It's not super long, but it's super steep, and then uh, it's a pure piece of ice, the north face of it. On this first project, La Liste, he couldn't ride the Obo Gabalon because he got injured. Jeremy was really keen to go on the Obergabelhorn. He called me up and I told him I, I will not be able, but I'm gonna support you. I'm gonna be part of the film team and I'm gonna film you. Obergabelhorn. It was really hard for me because he was in a way like taking away my dream line in perfect conditions, and I was there filming him. At the same time, I knew, okay, he's actually realizing right now what I was also dreaming about. And it was, it was a difficult moment in a way, but in a way, I, it was also a, a mind opener to, for me to see, okay, with this guy, I can do crazy stuff in the future. This is my future road partner. If we are lucky enough to ride it, it's gonna be like an intense moment for sure. Just climbing and riding it fast, you know, Sam style, is already quite a mission itself. But getting there, flying there, and combining those two sports, which have completely different challenges, is, uh, you know, raises the bar of that mission a lot. Of course it's consequential, like the whole mission is consequential. And crashing, of course, is a, it's a no-fall mountain. Maybe riding the Obergabalon could be like buckle the circle of uh, what we did together. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just landed at the base of the Obergabelo with this crazy little puppy. It's not yet in condition, but maybe in, with two or three storms, it's gonna be good. You focus on some other peaks, you go to Alaska, you go all the way around the world. And there is still this Obergabelhorn, which I haven't skied. You know? Yeah, I know, yeah. And it's up here. Of course, it's not like the most important, especially now, but it's still on my mind. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. I know what you mean, for sure. The ambition is to start from Zermatt with my paraglider, access the Obergabelhorn North Face, which is actually facing to the other valley, land at the bottom of it, hike it up, ski it down and fly back home. For me, it's like a combination of sports that I do on a really high level. Salut. Salut. Komm mal. Ich bin ein Star. Das ist das Fabriker, was ich meine, einfach so. Das ist dann noch so bereit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Du nimmst die grünen Pickel. Ich nehme die Grüne. Ja. Ja, hast du dich das letzte Mal gebraucht? Schon lange nicht mehr. Ich <lacht> sehe. <lacht> Scheiße. Hier, hier. Das ist ganz geil. Ja, aber Metro war schon so ein bisschen das Highlight, gewesen, oder? Ja, es war halt das Highlight, gewesen, weil man, man hat eine Route erst begonnen. Das war ja nachher auch der Grundstein für die alpinistischen Sachen. Gewesen. 
Ja, schon. Ja. Das ist schon cool, also wir können das so zusammen können machen. Entering the first time into this cave, it was just mind-blowing that uh, there was a connection to the sky. Simon was like, okay, up there there's a nice fall, nobody has climbed it, we should do it. And I was 13, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's special. Of course, I left Simon as a partner in mountaineering, but I had to also go for my own dreams and realize them. And now to be able to just combine those different disciplines is definitely something, yeah, I was dreaming about a long time ago. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. Good. Perfect, yeah? Hello. Wie geht's? Gut, und Albert? Super. Super? Super, super. Wie groß ist, ist das da? It's... Wie groß bin ich Avocado? Okay. Like a small or a big Avocado? I think it's small, because the belly is so small. If it's gonna look like Sam? It's gonna be a little fat baby. <laughs> Hungry? Uh, definitely. You've been filming a lot? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Ah, cool. We caught a super, super good week yeah, in Austria. Mm -hmm. It's such a, such a six, seven, dude. Oh, yeah? No grab. Like a real gangster. Super cool for you guys uh, to invite me. Sam has been doing it backwards, starting with ice climbing, alpinism, and then getting into freestyle. 2009, everything changed, and I went into free riding. At that time, I was like 24, 25 ish, and I did freestyle training with little 10 year olds too. <laughs> and I couldn't do a backflip on a trampoline, you know? Yeah, yeah. You so, started from pretty much zero. Yeah, pretty much. It's impressive. But it was super fun to learn that thing again because it was more like be a kid again and go, go play. Yeah. <laughs> How many times did you crash, Marcus? I think <laughs> twice. <laughs> Yeah, 
freestyling going on. Definitely. Party shred. <laughs> Hey, I'll bring it slow. How big it? The last time I landed a double backflip was uh, probably close to 20 years ago. It was so cool to be part of somebody else's project. Yeah, it's actually the first time I experienced that too. <laughs> <laughs> Participating at uh, yeah. another guy project. <laughs> it's, it's really it's cool. cool huh? <laughs> yeah. That's what I did the last 10 years. <laughs> it looks a bit easier. It's right, yeah. It is a dangerous dream, that's for sure. But that's why why we do it as safe as possible and think we learned a lot in the last year years to not push for for the dreams to yeah to get into a nightmare ah the kit alle hey das haben wir früher immer gemacht Ja. 
Simon, he came up here when he was like six or seven years old. And he saw the guys climbing. And he was like, oh, sick, I want to do that. Do you feel sometimes that it makes you be more in danger because you're trusting yourself too much? Yeah. You're too experienced? Yeah. And it happened to me. Those are the, the worst feedbacks that you can get. You see that you're like, okay, a little thing like that, a little mistake like that could be game over. And it's, it's good to realize that. Oh. I was slipping, yeah. Incredible. Nice. Sometimes I feel like a slave about my dreams. <laughs> slave of yeah. the dreams. I can't do it differently than go for it. And go for it, yeah. Four years that I put way too much pressure on myself because I knew I wanted to win and I'm going to compete until I win. Yeah, you have, you have reached the top. We didn't. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> the year I won was the worst year of my ski career for sure. Wanted to win too much, which destroyed the joy. If people ask me like, why are you doing this? I don't know, the only thing that comes to my mind is because, it, because I want to do it or like because I can do it. And you know that what you want to do on on Ova Gabrielholm raises the question in me like why <laughs> why because first of all uh, I have never skied it and the other point is that it's possible to access it with a paraglider from my hometown How is it looking? Not too bad. The uh, X term is announcing a better thermals than they said yesterday. Ah, cool. I Thanks. need to dress up dress because up. we need to catch the train, right? Yeah. Can I use your bathroom? No. Okay. Shit in your pants. I'm back on track. That is some. <laughs> ah, come on. Ah. We were just not even high enough. So we are on the way to Brunekorn. Uh, one negative side from that is that we are carrying our rings on the way up. Gonna go straight up soon. Here we go. 450. So the next flight we need to do another thousand meters. Yeah. yeah! Look at that beauty! Not ideal, huh? Nope! We still have one or two weeks and then it's over. It's possible, but to have both conditions... This is accumulating and that's our sign to go home! Since the last try, we had some thunderstorms and some smaller storms, which are promising for conditions. No way, come on.
Junge, warum hast du nichts gelernt? Too much, too much pushing. It's the 10th of June. Conditions are not good anymore and they're not gonna get any better. It's part of the game that sometimes it's not working out. And of course I could have taken another mountain which, which would be way easier to fly to or to ski down on it, but uh, I, I want to go to this one. I think uh, Sam is really good at saying no. Decisions who are at that moment maybe not popular, but long term are really important. If it's climbing or skiing, the individual is not as important, it's the team which is important. You need to have this attitude. I think Sam has understood that better than anyone. Many people probably wouldn't have become what they are if Sam wasn't there. It's a team effort and maybe my success this day was uh, because of Sammy maybe. Yeah. The second roll opens up good things that you can escape easier, that you can step out of the spotlight easier. That's the fun part or the attractive part about mountain guiding, that you're really enabling somebody to fully fight their dreams. It is true in a way that we are always searching for something new, something better. And yeah, at the end you have to be also satisfied with what you have done. Definitely, I feel like now it's also a bit of time to rethink my decisions because when you have a family, you're, you're not alone anymore. And yeah, it's definitely like a circle that closes, but not completely. I think can go further. <laughs>